Hey guys, it's Kaylee. I'm back with another what sold from last week video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over my sales on eBay and Poshmark and go over some items that are selling right now that are popular and selling quickly. If you want to know what to look for while you are out at your local thrift store to flip online for a profit, let's just dive right into these sales. All right, you guys. So these sales happen between February 11th through the 17th. Not a bad sales week at all. Um, I have a lot to go through up here, so I'm going to be quick. I included not only bolas, but also some bread and butter items, um, not so much brands, but factor stacking in those brands um, that I have sold because a couple of you have asked for some more bread and butter items. And usually these videos are meant to show the bolos, you know, the higher priced items or the quick selling ones that you want to look for. Um, but because of those requests, I did add some bread and butter stuff in here as well. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. Um, in total this week, I sold 245 items for a gross item sales total of $7,845.08. My average sale price was only $32, which is pretty low. Want to get that closer to $40 and I'm still working on that. However, per usual, I sold a lot of lower price stuff on Poshmark, um, which my average sale price on Poshmark was around $25, which is why um, the average sale price was dragged down so much. You can see my average item sale price on eBay was extremely high, which I'm so happy about, was almost $43. And that's really where I want to get as a whole, even with the lower price sales on Poshmark. So still working towards that. Some weeks to get very, very close, but between $35 and $40 on a regular basis is where I really want to keep my sales. So working on that, but part of that journey is getting rid of older items and moving them out so they're not dragging my store down. But great sales week. Very happy with these numbers. And let's dive into some of these bolos and things that sold. So this first one is an absolute bolo. It is the brand Selkie. They make honestly a lot of stuff, but one of the things they're most well known for, I had to do a lot of research when I purchased this dress through wholesale, um, are these like kind of fairy looking really short mini dresses with like puff sleeves. I don't really know what these are for, but it, it is what they are well known for and their website promotes them a lot. So um, they go for a ton of money specifically on Poshmark. They perform extremely well. And depending on which one you have, some of them are more rare and some of them are not. But this silhouette, these mini dresses that are kind of like fit and flare, um, it's a very popular style, I guess is what I'll say. So if you see anything like this, I would definitely look it up regardless of brand. I've just been selling a lot in the silhouette. This one I listed for $300 because I did have a more rare one. Um, it did take some time to sell. I listed this at the very end of October, so several months. Um, but honestly, when you have something listed this high, something higher ASP, um, once you start getting in the hundreds, you kind of expect that it's going to take a while to sell. It's a big commitment for someone to purchase online, especially pre-owned. So I'm pretty happy with it only taking several months. Um, I accepted a best offer of $200 on this dress and made quite a bit of money on it. So very happy with that. And I will definitely be looking for this brand. I've also sold um, some of their like regular stuff like a hoodie. So keep your eye out for it. Um, this one was also a 1X, which I think helped to up the value. Next up, another category you will want to look for are vintage uh, sports jackets, specifically either leather or the satin bombers perform extremely well. This one is a vintage starter jacket, which some of the vintage starter stuff can do really well depending on what it is. This was Major League Baseball and it was a San Francisco Giants satin bomber jacket. Um, Really the only issue with this one is it did have some inner staining on like the inside near the neckline. We did try to get that out, but it didn't come completely out. But otherwise the jacket on the exterior was in really fantastic condition. Um, I listed this for $175 or best offer. I got an offer very quickly for $149, which I obviously accepted. Um, and this one I listed on February 2nd. It sold on February 17th. So just about two weeks for this to sell. Again, really amazing for an item in the 
you know, couple hundred dollars range. So keep your eye out for stuff like this. Um, I found that it really depends on what the team is, um, what the brand is. But in general, if I see a vintage looking bomber jacket like this, varsity jacket, leather jackets with the team branding on it, I look it up and more often than not, it is a bolo. Next up, this is a Bolo brand to be on the lookout for. It is Claire V. This is kind of like a luxury designer brand. Their stuff is very like simple. They make bags, uh, they make clothing. As you can see, the tag is just very simple. So gotta know what to look for. This is a Claire V uh, just sweatshirt. It says a little graphic on the front. I listed this for $100. It sold for my full asking price and it took almost exactly a month to sell. So um, even with a couple of light stains, 100 bucks, can't beat it. So keep your eye out for this brand. Next up is another Bolo brand. It is Alp and Rock. Um, they make these like embroidered Henleys. Some of them are a lot more crazy than this and go for a lot more. But in general, you're looking at probably like $75 up for a pre-owned Henley. Very high sell-through rate. We'll see how that sell-through rate continues um, as warmer weather starts because they're kind of like a thermally shirt in my opinion. Um, so this one was an XL, which I think also helped to sell it. I listed this for $85. It did have a small spot on the front and it sold for my full asking price. Uh, this one did take a while to sell. Um, I listed this in July of 2023 and it just now sold. I'm thinking I probably had it priced too high with that spot on the front. So that's probably why um, I should have dropped the price probably closer to 65, but it did end up selling for full asking price. So I am happy with that. But moving forward, if I have something like this, we do need to drop the price a little bit. All right, next up is a newer brand to me. It's called Bump Suit. I think I don't know if this is like a maternity jumpsuit or if it's just a shapewear. I think it is a maternity and we probably should have put maternity in the title, uh, but it didn't matter because really great comps on this, super popular and it sold quickly. So I am so happy with that. It only took five days to sell um, and it went on an international sale through eBay's shipping program. So definitely keep your eye out for bump suit and just in general, not even the maternity lines, but any any brand right now this like onesie kind of jumpsuit or romper when it's like a stretchy material very trendy right now so a great uh great category i guess to look for and to look up so this one i listed for 75 dollars. it sold like i said within five days of being listed for an offer to watcher of around 64 dollars um and very quick sale Next up, this is a vintage kind of Y2K item to look for, velour um, and velvet track suits, either separates or sets. It really depends on the brand and what it is. Um, but if I see one, I always look it up. This is Fila. It is a men's size extra large vintage velour track suit. I listed the entire set for $95. It sold on an offer to watcher for $81 on an international sale, which I found interesting. Um, and this one looks like it took uh, about a month and a half for this to sell. Another bolo, this is St. John. Um, a lot of people know St. John for their Santana knits. This one I went back and forth with if it was Santana knit. I, I don't think that it was, um, but it is tweed, which seemed to really increase value. So something to keep your eye out for. I listed this one for 60 because it did have some extreme discoloration on the necklines and the sleeves. Um, and it still sold for my full asking price, which again, was dropped because of those falls. Could have probably sold this closer to $100, um, but it sold for 60, uh, my full asking price. And let's see, this one took zero days to sell. <laughs> sold the same day, so that's great. All right, next up, this is J. Crew Collection. J. Crew has a couple different lines and fabrics that they use, but J. Crew Collection definitely increases value, so something to be on the lookout for. Uh, anytime I find something in J. Crew that's super like thick, heavy feeling, I always look it up. Uh, this would be one of those pieces for sure. It is a wool vest and you can see it's a longer length. Um, this one we listed for 60. It sold for our full asking price. 
Um, and this one also sold the same day. That's awesome. This one we had to do some <laughs> stain treating on, so I'm really glad everything came out. But yeah, J. Crew has some really high quality pieces, depending on what you have. If you ever feel something and you're like, man, this just feels super thick or really great materials, I would just look it up because they, they really have some high quality pieces that can sell for a lot. All right, this is a newer brand to me. It is Dr. Collectors. You can see that it's kind of like a tacked on tag a little bit, kind of interesting, really cool, really beautiful tie-dye shirt. Um, if you guys look these up, at the time I looked them up, very high sell-through rate, although they didn't seem like a lot were out there, but the ones that were listed also had sold. Um, made in USA, size large, kind of like a niche thing. Um, I listed it for $70. It sold on offer to Watcher for $59. Um, this one did take a couple of months to sell, but great profits on that. Um, and I've also found just this category, like a thick, high quality tie dye, either shirt or sweatshirts. There's a lot of niche brands out there like this in this like high quality tie dye realm. Um, that perform really well, and this would be one of them. So if I ever see a high quality tie dye item, I just always look it up. Uh, so keep your eye out for Dr. Collectors. You guys know this brand, I absolutely love it. I won't talk about it too much, but I pick up pretty much anything in this brand. This is Frank and Eileen. Um, one thing I'd like to point out, just cause um, one of a fellow reseller reached out to me on Instagram cause they found this and they were having a hard time selling it. So they usually have their style name on the inside label, like where the material tag is, if it's not right here. So this says Barry. Typically, whenever you have a masculine sounding style name, typically it means it's a men's item. That is not true with Frank and Eileen. Um, so you kind of have to really look everything up to figure out, is it men's, is it women's? Um, they also don't follow the button rule. So you can see this one could be a men's, um, but it's actually a women's top. So it's just good to know, man, that's a blurry photo. <laughs> um, it's just good to know, you know, which brands don't follow those rules and where the exceptions lie. So Frank and Eileen is definitely one of those brands. Um, this one we listed for 60 bucks. It was a little bit less desirable of a style. It did sell for our full asking price and it took a week to sell. This is a newer brand to me. Um, but every time I've listed it, it has sold pretty quickly. The brand is Dish with two S's kind of a niche brand. Um, this one did have a couple of flaws, slight discoloration on the bottom hems, but pretty cool pieces and they do feel pretty high quality. Um, I listed this for $55 with the flaws. It did sell for my full asking price. However, it did take multiple months to sell. Um, so keeping that in mind, probably should have dropped it a little bit lower, but this brand seems to have a pretty good following and one I would definitely keep your eye out for. Another brand I'd keep your eye out for with pretty high sell through rate is Ula Johnson. Nice designer brand. Um, I haven't really found anything in this brand that doesn't perform well. They have bathing suits, dresses, tops. This one was super cute, puff sleeve top. Listed this for 50 bucks. It did have some small holes on the back. This is the theme of the video. I'm getting rid of all my <laughs> flawed items, but I, I like showing these because when you have high quality, desirable pieces, sometimes just a couple of flaws doesn't mean you can't still list it and get good money for it. You just have to drop the price and make it a good deal for somebody. So this did sell for my full asking price. Um, and this one took about a week to sell. Next up, um, this is a bowl of in my opinion, any kind of Eileen Fisher plus size piece, very high sell through rate, sells for great money. This is just an Eileen Fisher women's tunic top, black. It's just viscous and spandex, but it was a 1X. I listed this for $45. It sold for my full asking price and it sold in a month. So really great for, you know, kind of like a mall brand. Um, keep your eye out for Eileen Fisher plus size pieces. Next up, this is a brand that is part of the like log and look aesthetic, um, oversized high quality linens. I pick this brand up a lot in spring and summer. It does really well. It is Bren Walker. This is a size large, 
100% linen pants. You can see they're kind of interesting, wide leg, log and looky. I listed these for 50 bucks. They sold for my full asking price. Um, and they only took a couple of months to sell, which they got listed in December. So it's probably just a seasonality thing coming into warmer weather. Another Eileen Fisher plus size. This is a 2X new with tags. I listed them for $40. They sold for my full asking price. Um, and let's see, they took about a month to sell. All right, this, this item took a long time to sell. Um, almost probably eight months or something like that. Um, but I just thought I would mention it because it's very unique and interesting. And I'm starting to see a lot of really wacky, bright multicolor stuff sell. And I think it's just kind of like an aesthetic that people are after. So if you see anything like this, it's definitely worth looking up. I probably should have a uh, price much lower because it did have a spot on the back. This ended up selling for $27 on an international sale. Um, so not too much, but again, I thought it was worth mentioning because sometimes something very unique and wacky like this can take a not so desirable brand and elevate it enough that you can sell it for bread and butter prices. So this was one of those pieces. All right, next up, this is a new wear brand to me in the athletic wear and kind of athleisure area. It is a day, all one word, a day. Um, pretty good comps on this. This is a pair of uh, like pull on pants with some zips, size large. I listed it for $45. It sold for $38 on an offer, um, but it only took a couple of weeks to sell. So that's awesome. Next up, this is the brand Foxy Docs. This is not a brand that by any means has a high sell through rate, um, but it did have a lot of great factors. Really beautiful, high low silhouette, had some ruffle details, had burr print cut on on the back. There was just a lot of factor stacking involved that we thought it would sell well. Um, we listed this for $35. It did sell for our full asking price and it took a few months to sell. Um, but again, Sometimes you can take a brand that is not desirable as long as you have enough factor stacking going on and it's a trendy piece. I do not make a habit of this um, because I think if I did, I'd have a lot of pieces sitting, um, but I, we do make exceptions here and there. All right, next up, this is a maternity brand that has been performing pretty well for us. It is Hatch. These were called the, uh, the ultimate before, during, and after crop flare made out of bamboo. Uh, so I think it was just a particularly popular piece in this brand. We listed these for $35. They sold for full asking price and they took a couple of months to sell. Next up, this is another Eileen Fisher. This was a plus size 3X silk button down sleeveless top. We listed it for 45. It sold on an offer to watcher for $38 um, and it only took a couple of weeks to sell. Keep your eye out again for Eileen Fisher plus size pieces. Next up, this is a brand that is a designer brand that performs pretty well, depending on what you got, is Lauren Moshi. Kind of a simple tag, so again, keep your eye out for it. This is a like monster truck sweatshirt. It just gave me very Y2K vibes with the flames, so I thought it would pull the sale through. We listed this for $45. It sold for an offer to watcher of $38, um, and it only took a month to sell, so that was pretty awesome. All right, next up, this is another high-quality linens brand that I sell a ton of in spring and summer. It is Flax. This is a nice uh, longer-length dress. Again, linen, size large. It's print. Lots of great things going for it. Um, this one also had flaws. Otherwise, I'd list it, I would have listed it higher. I listed it for $35. It sold for my full asking price, and it sold the next day after being listed. Next up, this is Abercrombie & Fitch. Um, this is their Curve Love line, which we probably should have put in the title. This line, Curve Love, is very trendy right now. Um, anytime I see Abercrombie & Fitch new with tags, I usually look it up because this pop this brand has become very popular and gained some resurgence. Um, so keep your eye out for it. Um, it's very expensive new. So when you find it new with tags, you can usually flip it online for a profit. I listed these shorts, denim shorts for $35. They sold for my full asking price. They only took a week to sell. 
another Eileen Fisher plus size piece. I actually sold this previously and I think it got returned or maybe the order was canceled. I can't remember, um, but it resold very quickly. Um, size 2X, linen, lime green, all cool things, all great factor stacking. Um, this I listed for 35, it sold for full asking price. And after getting relisted, it only took a week to sell. Next up, this is the brand J McLaughlin. I think I mentioned this in a previous video. They're very similar to Eileen Fisher where they make some really nice bright multicolor print stuff. And that's the stuff in my opinion that performs the best. Um, this one's not not one of those bright pieces, but it is very nautical and preppy, just a white and blue striped dress. However, this was their Catalina cloth, which is their signature material. It's made out of nylon and spandex, very stretchy, kind of like scuba feeling. This material in general, the nylon stretchy dresses, if you guys find them, I would look them up in just about any brand. It is a very popular uh, fabric. Their fabric is called Catalina cloth. So I always include that in the title if it is indeed Catalina cloth and it adds a lot of value. Definitely a bolo within Jay McLaughlin um, in tops, dresses, or whatever. I listed this dress for $40. It sold on an offer to watcher for $34. This one did take a couple of months to sell. However, I think it's because I listed it in winter. Here is another designer brand that performs pretty well for me. Sometimes I have to sit on it, um, but in general, I do end up getting a pretty good profit for it. This is M.M. LaFleur. This one um, had some factors going for it. It was a knit tank top and it was a size extra large, which I think helped to increase value. I listed it for $35. It sold for my full asking price and it took a little over a month to sell. Next up, this is more bread and butter. So if you guys are looking for some bread and butter flips, Talbot's plus size pieces can perform really well. The key is there has to be an additional factor. It can't just be plus size, but be like a plain t-shirt. Um, it has to have like bright multicolors or puff sleeves, or in this case, it is a longer length wrap top. Um, so it really depends. Um, I listed this one. It was a 3X for $30. It did sell for my full asking price. Um, this one took a while to sell. I usually list uh, Talbot's pieces for around 25 bucks. So I think I just listed it too high and then it never got caught when I dropped prices, probably because there were offers out there. But bread and butter for me, I like picking up Talbot's plus size pieces. Here's another kind of bread and butter in a soft surroundings. This is a size large. Their plus sizes are definitely really great. Size large is you're starting to see a drop on sell through rates, but sometimes if it's a substantial enough piece, it can perform well. This is a burnout. This is what this like thinner material is. I find that burnout material really increases value. You got to make sure to put it in your title to get the right buyer. Um, so this is a soft surroundings, open front burnout cardigan. Um, we listed it for 30 bucks. It sold for full asking price and it only took two days to sell. Here is a bolo brand in shoes, specifically if you can get them at a low price, dance goes. And also specifically, it seems like they're clogs. They're like nurse shoes, clog comfort shoes don't really perform as well anymore, but they're more modern looking trendy stuff like these sandals um, seems to be what everybody's after. So I keep my eye out for the interesting, more modern pieces now, um, but Dansko can be a really great brand to look for. Let me see if I can find, here's the bottom of the shoe if you wanna look for that brand. Uh, these were called the Joni sandals. We found them at the bins. They did have some slight wear throughout. Listed them for 35, they sold on an offer to watcher for 30, um, and they only took a couple of months to sell. Here's another Talbot's plus size piece. This is a cardigan, so a more sub substantial piece. Plus it's got bright multicolor print to it, floral. So for those reasons, all those factor stacking, I picked it up, listed this for 30. It did sell for my full asking price. Let's see how long did that take to sell. This sold the next day, so great piece. Um, I talked about this in a previous video, Robert Graham. Very, very trendy, 
right now, I guess for spring and summer, I've been selling a ton of Robert Graham. So uh, keep your eye out for it. They're known for their like flip cuff pieces, the longer sleeve ones where you flip the cuff over and it, it's a different print. However, I've been selling quite a few of their short sleeve pieces as well. If they are either larger size or like a bright multicolor print, this, this one was both. It was 2XL plus it was a bright multicolor. I listed this for 35. It sold on an offer to watcher for 30 um, and it took a couple of months to sell. This is a pair of suspenders. Anytime I see men's suspenders, I always see if it is this brand or like Brooks Brothers. There's a couple of them that perform well. This is the brand Trafalgar and very high sell through rate on the suspenders. Um, this one, I listed back in December. It just now sold. So right at that like 90 day mark. Um, but it did sell for my full asking price of $30 and I only paid $2.99 for it. So it can be... Um, a great pickup and in general the Trafalgar line even in belts also performs well but I feel like this is a category that people pass on a lot belts and suspenders and things like that so I usually find them at the bins if you guys see them definitely pick them up next up another bread and butter for me this is figs they are uh, nursing scrubs depending on the style, uh, they can perform really well. I usually get about 25 bucks for them, which is what these sold for my full asking price. Um, I listed these a couple of months ago, so they took a couple of months to sell, but again, full asking price, and you can find them pretty often. This is something I think is gonna be popular again for spring and summer, so I'm starting to pick it up. They are Outdoorsy Brands Dresses. This one is a Toad & Co. women's uh, hill rose dress. Size extra small, but had a couple of factors going for it. Listed it for 30, sold for full asking price, um, and it took a couple of months to sell. This is another example of like a higher quality linen uh, pieces to be on the lookout for. This is the brand Rose Marine, and I can't remember if this is a Bolo brand. I don't think it is. I think this one we just got for factor stacking because it was plus size linen. It was a longer length dress. We listed this for 30. It sold on an offer to watcher for $25, so definitely more bread and butter. This one took several months to sell, but it's because we listed it in winter. Here's another great uh, bread and butter to look for. It is Lauren Ralph Lauren plus size tops. This is a 1X plus size top. Um, again, similar to Talbot's, I don't just get plain stuff. It has to have some other factor to pull it through. In this case, it was a button up shirt and it was linen. This sold for my full asking price and it only took a couple of weeks to sell. Another Talbot's plus size piece. This is a silk satin top in a plus size gorgeous color and silhouette to this. Listed this for 30. It sold on an offer to watcher for $25 through an international sale. And looking at it now, also a repeat buyer. So I have a repeat international buyer. That's pretty cool. Um, this one did take several months to sell, but again, silk's not selling very quickly in the middle of winter. So I think that's why it took so long to sell. Another bread and butter, Michael Kors plus size tops. This is a 1X. Again, some factor stacking. It has some interesting stuff going on for it. Let's it for 25. It sold on an offer to watcher for 21. Um, this one took about a month to sell. Also a bread and butter. Again, factor stacking. This is Crown and Ivy. Some other stuff, if I get enough going for a piece in plus sizes, I can get 25 bucks for it. This one was a 2X um, and it was a three quarter length sleeve, or sorry, we have it listed as long sleeve, but I think it might be three quarter, but I think it's all good with the buyer because I haven't gotten a return. Um, and it had that bright multicolor print to pull the sale through. Listed this for 25, it sold on offer to watcher for 21. Um, this did take a few months to sell. Let's go on to the Poshmark sales now. This, the, remember the first item I showed you, Selkie? Very similar silhouette to this. This is the brand Hill House. Um, very popular brand to be on the lookout for. I would definitely keep your eye out for it. Um, specifically in their longer dresses perform even better. Um, but this was called the Nap Dress. Again, 
that same silhouette. It's mini, it's got puff sleeves, it's kind of flaring out. Um, this one I think I listed for around 50 or 60. I ended up accepting an offer of $42 on this and it did sell pretty quickly. Uh, this is more bread and butter polo by Ralph Lauren men's pants if they are a larger size or they have great materials. Again, sometimes more bread and butter, um, but they can perform well. So I like picking them up. I can find them pretty abundantly where I live. These men's linen pants in a larger size sold for 30 bucks. Another bread and butter, this is Madewell. I don't pick up a lot of Madewell. Um, it has to have some factor stacking. In this case, this one is a size large and it is a tiered maxi skirt, so longer length. This sold for $26. This is definitely a bolo. This is the brand Kobe Halperin. Not great comps on eBay on this brand, but on Poshmark, it seems to be way more popular. Um, and their bright multicolor blouses seem to, be, seem to be what people are after. This is a really gorgeous kind of tropical blouse in a size XXL, which I definitely think helped up the value. It sold for $75 pre-owned on Poshmark. So Keep your eye out for it. And I do think it's important to know, uh, again, that this brand is way more popular on Poshmark. Next up, this is a brand I've sold quite a bit of over the last year and a newer brand to me. It is La Causa. Apparently they sell this brand on uh, Revolve. It is kind of like a, um, it's, I guess like a swimwear kind of thing. I usually see like cover-up dresses by this brand and they perform well so this is a bouquet maxi dress um, we probably had it listed somewhere at like 50 or 60 it sold on an offer for 42 dollars you could see we included like keywords like beach cover-up vacation things like that another bread and butter Catherine's plus size again have to factor stack fourth of july is coming up so we thought that this one might do well Size 4X, listed it for 25, it sold for 20 on Posh. This is an anthropology piece. I'm very careful about what anthropology pieces I pick up um, these days just because it has become kind of oversaturated and you have to become a little bit more picky. Um, but this one was a size extra large and it was a more substantial piece, longer length, kind of like kimono top thing. Um, it sold for $46 even with a flaw. So that was awesome and a gorgeous piece. More bread and butter, but high sell through rate item. This is the brand Young Maven. I've mentioned this a couple times. This is a men's t-shirt. It sold for 24. Another bread and butter. This is Carhartt men's fire resistant cargo pants. They sold for 28. This is a designer brand. This is Christian Dior. This shirt sold for $75 on Poshmark. Um, and I do think you need to be careful with Christian Dior because you have to be able to verify authenticity, which sometimes can be hard to do. Next up is a men's Lululemon polo. This one looks like one of their newer labels. This is called the Evolution Peak Polo, and we were lucky enough to get it new with tags. Listed this probably around $65 to $70. It sold on an offer for $51 on Poshmark. I still like getting men's Lululemon polos. It's just I can usually only flip them for $25 to $30 pre-owned. So finding it new with tags, definitely going to increase the value. This is a brand similar to Jay McLaughlin and Lily Pulitzer that if you can find them in that like nylon material, which this one was, and bright multicolor can perform well. This is Jude Connolly. Um, you can see bright multicolor, it's that nylon-y material sold for 35. Next up, this is a Bolo brand. This is the brand Proof. Apparently we do not have a picture. Oh, here we go. I think we went with the RN number on this one. Um, Merino wool t-shirt, any kind of wool base layer brand we always look for. Um, very high sell through rate on the proof merino wools shirts. Um, this one had a couple of flaws, otherwise we would have listed it higher, but even with the flaws, it sold for $28, which is great. I pick up anything Reformation. This is a Reformation 
Margot skirt in a larger size. Also had some small uh, flaws, but again, so desirable that we just dropped the price and we're still able to make 40 bucks on the skirt. So keep your eye out for reformation. This is also more bread and butter. This is J. Jill Plus sizes. This is their Love Linen line. This top sold for 30 bucks. More bread and butter, Lululemon. Lululemon's really gone downhill as far as sell through rate goes. Only very specific pieces sell. This was their Align tank top. Um, I came across a bunch of these pre-owned and they've not sold well on eBay, but they're selling really well on Poshmark. Again, kind of getting to know your customer on each platform. Um, I'm selling these usually around $30 to $35 pre-owned, but uh, $34 for this one. This one is a Bolo Ralph Lauren with the big pony graphics. Um, this one had it on the back as the more prominent logo, so that's why we chose that as the cover photo. Um, this sold for $40 on Posh. Brawls can still perform well for us. This is a new with tags Kashyyyk bra. Um, we listed it for $25. It sold for a full asking price. This is a good brand to look for in swimsuits. At least it has been every single year. Um, sometimes you can get a lot more for it if it's a larger size. This one is Miracle Suits. One piece. It's a size 14 pre-owned. Um, it sold for an offer of $30. Another Lululemon piece. This is a more substantial piece in a jacket. Nice floral color. It sold for $41. Here's more bread and butter, but I do like picking up this brand. It's part of that like log and look linen stuff. Um, XCVI. These are wide leg smocking details. Just an interesting piece and very on trend. It sold for 32. Lands in plus sizes is another um, bread and butter for me. This one specifically is a rash guard. Again, a nylon stretchy material. These rash guards and lands in perform very well for me, specifically in larger sizes. This sold for 25. Here's another anthropology piece that performed really well. Again, being very specific with what we're picking up. This is Aldo Martins. Um, sold an anthropology, nice multicolored dress. This sold for $54. Abercrombie and Fitch. Um, in addition to some of their modern stuff, their vintage Y2K stuff is also performing well. I would consider this kind of like a Y2K piece, which we unfortunately did not put in our title. Um, but men's sweatpants in Abercrombie and Fitch can perform well. They sold for $40 pre-owned, so that's pretty awesome. On Cloud, this brand has really dropped in sell-through rates. I think it got super popular and then everybody started picking it up. And now the market's kind of oversaturated. But if you get the right piece in the right size, in the right style, can perform well. These are the Cloudflyer men's shoes and they sold for $55. And they did have some slight wear throughout, as you guys can see. And lastly, going along with those Merino Wool base layer shirts, this is the brand Smart Wool. Women's size large, long sleeve, and it sold for $34. Keep your eye out for these base layers. All right, guys, so that's it for what sold last week. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching. If you're not already and you would like to be, don't forget to subscribe down below. Hit that notification bell. Give me a thumbs up on your way out. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.